and welcome back once again. If you're new here, my name is Rusty. This is my channel where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal. And we are going to continue with the Joyride Trilogy with Joyride 2, Dead Ahead, Unrated. Okay. So yeah. Joyride 2. Dead Ahead, Unrated, was released in 2008, so seven years after the original. I guess, I don't know if the same company or somebody got a hold of the property and decided to do it. Now, uh, the second movie is, of course, a big departure from the genre. The first movie was like The Hitcher, was more of a stock and road movie, whereas this one is also, a, you know, I mean, it's not that they didn't do that part but they added an element and that was torture porn and people who know me know that I am not a huge fan by any stretch of the imagination of torture porn um, everyone I guess has their line of where they think something crosses over into that and um, Joyride 2 and 3 definitely crossed into that line um, but I don't hate them I own them <laughs> and I'm not a completionist I don't buy shit just because I have to have every child's play movie I don't have every child's play movie I have all of them except bride and seed because I don't like those and I don't have them somebody wants to send me the blu-rays you can but I'm not going to pop by money when there's so much other stuff that I want so I don't have Joyride 2 and 3 because I'm a completionist. I have them because I, I like them. I mean, I just don't like them like them. Um, they're not masterpieces. They're not classics. And they wouldn't be anywhere in my top horror movies. But, so Joyride 2, Dead Ahead, Unrated, was released in 2008. It was directed by Louis Marneau, written by James Robert Johnston and Bennett Yellen and it stars Nikki Acox, Nick Zano and Laura Jordan. Now, as I said this movie was a big departure from the first one. Um, it The intro to this one is alright, you know, a uh, hooker is at a truck stop and she comes to get a ride uh, or action. Um, with a trucker and she happens to unfortunately pick Rusty Nell. So she gets into there and he ends up, she ends up not giving him the respect he thinks he deserves and uh, she tries to get out through the window where he then rolls her up halfway into the window and then takes off decapitating her on the side of another truck. So kind of sets the tone of the movie and then we move on to the actual story the actual synopsis of this movie is that you have um, two sisters who are going to take a cross-country trip of course they're going to Las Vegas um, so they're taking a trip to Las Vegas and it's Bob and Melissa Kayla and uh, Nick whom they pick up along the way and Bob and Melissa did not know that Kayla was going to pick up this guy she had been talking to on social media for months they didn't know that so that's how we end up with our four group so they're taking off in Kayla's stupid car because Kayla is a stupid bitch and she plays one of those ro roles that I don't really appreciate and that is the the big boobed bubblehead that role the you know her sister is pretty and rational and normal whereas she's just one of those you know the kind of girls that I'm talking about <laughs> I'm so stupid I'm so bubble-headed that I've got big boobs <laughs> you know and uh, she's that and it's just it's it's embarrassing but so she of course picks up an equally dippy bubblehead guy um, who's pretending to be a tough little goth and he's actually just a big pussy but we'll get into that 
So they're heading out to Las Vegas on their little trip when the car breaks down. They walk and walk and walk in the hot Las Vegas outside, you know. We're talking about Arizona here. So they happen upon a little spread, a nice little house on some land and a barn and stuff. No one answers, but they really need help. So the dickwad, Nick, he actually breaks a window and goes in. They go in, they're like, well, whoever lives here doesn't live here very often, or they're away, or whatever. Now, of course, what they don't know is that they have fucking broken into Rusty Nail's house. So, they try the phones, but they're not working, because he stays on the road all the time. And they find his beautiful car. He's got a nice car. They find his car in the barn, and they're like, well, we can take it, and we can go into town, and we can get help, you know, we can rent a car, because, you know, and do whatever we're going to with the old one. We can uh, get our stuff, rent a car, and then we will return this car with money for the door and the window that we damage. So, I mean, they're not being like super assholes or anything. I mean, granted, it was breaking and entering, but they were desperate. I mean, I, I understand it. You know, they're not really assholes. Well, Nick's an asshole, but um, uh, so that's that was their intention. Now, they of course had stopped and made fun of truckers in the this truck stop, and what they didn't know was that Rusty Nell had already been home, found his shit gone, and found her note. She had left a note with her number, her cell, her mobile number, telling him, sorry about this, we borrowed, you know, we've taken the car, we'll bring it back with money and all that kind of stuff. So, Rusty might have left them alone if he hadn't have been there and heard them saying the shit that they were saying. Now, one thing I will say about Rusty Nell He seems to, they at least didn't give any indication that I saw that he went after people who did absolutely nothing to him. If you do something to him, if you cross him, which seems to be a very low threshold, he seems to be triggered very easily, but <laughs> if you do something or say something to him, and or are with someone who does something or says something to him, you're fucked. So he's got a very low trigger. Doesn't take a lot of pressure to pull that bitch. So he ends up kidnapping Bob. And here comes the directives, you know. Um, you're going to go do this. You're going to go do that. They, he did, they It was stuff like, um, you've got to bring me the girl Kayla shot him the bird she flipped him the bird so which in England is this in America it's this in England it's that but um, she had done that so he demanded that they bring him her finger and uh, they went to a morgue to try to get one off of a chick a dead chick but of course he knew better than that because he's watching them of course and um, he ends up cutting off Bob's finger because of that. Um, so that didn't work. He makes them do some other tasks, including the kind of funny one, which is he makes them go buy meth at a big biker place gathering. So not only do they have to go and buy meth, a bag of meth for him, but Nick has to do it and drag which if you paid attention was the wig and stuff the wig and jacket and clothes that the hooker that he killed at the truck stop at the beginning of the movie that was the stuff that he made Nick dress up in they took forever to convince him to do it because you know he's like I'm not going in there looking like a drag queen uh, he used a different word 
but you know and they were like no 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 we will fix you up to where they you really do look like a girl they won't know that you're in drag so he agrees to do that and instead rusty uh, rusty nail kidnaps him there is a person who no longer is alive in my life named rusty something and i almost said his last name but anyway that was that little trip you saw me do but um rusty nail gets him and takes him back and here's where we have like a big torture scene i told you about this movie going full torture porn he makes them play a game with the dice where he has punishments like two is a sledgehammer to the knee and three is like losing an arm or whatever he's got stuff you roll the dice so he makes them play the game and for the first time in the movie i actually felt sorry for nick because first of all nick had already admitted that he was a fake his tattoos were all fake um, everything about him was fake and so I, I did feel a little sorry for him because earlier I had even took the time to rent uh, to write I want Nick dead I want Nick dead <laughs> so that was earlier in the movie as I was writing notes as how much I couldn't stand him um, but by this time I did feel sorry for him, and I had always felt sorry for uh, Bob and Melissa. Kayla, she's kind of redeemed herself when she saved her sister, um, because Rusty Nell thought he had killed both of them. He flipped their car. She managed to get out. Melissa got out, but Kayla couldn't get out, and she was really injured, so she let him kill her run her over and blow the car up and she got the last word though because this whole thing had been about the finger that's what she gave him as he hit the car so that was kind of cute too um so rusty Nell thinks that um both of the girls are dead so he's like torturing these two guys he ends up killing nick horribly and then he um, is going to take Bob out and finish him off. What he doesn't know is that Melissa is alive and she has come back. So you have this nice little um, showdown between Rusty Nell and Melissa. And she ends up winning by him went off a cliff I was trying to think yeah she like hit a fuel tank blew it up jumped out leaving rusty nail in the car or in the truck and it went off a cliff and blew up but of course you know that's not going to happen either so they think that it's all over a Melissa and Bobby a very damaged Bobby and a very damaged Melissa lived through it so we didn't have a final girl we had a final girl and a final boy and this and a final couple if you will and they go off and it's supposedly over the outro however has rusty nail picking up a, a girl broke down on the side of the road and um she climbs in and he says something like good thing i came along you could catch your death out there or something like that so we know that Rusty Nell is still alive, and there you go. That's the end of Joyride 2, Dead Ahead. Now, like I said, I don't hate this movie. And I don't hate the third one either. There are things about them I like. Um, I think they're both filmed very well. They don't seem cheap. Um, I think both of them were straight to video. Um, but they're filmed very well good special effects the acting is fine there's really nothing C or D movie about it um, so I have no issues with Joyride 2 as far as 
the actors. The one I was supposed to hate, I really hated. Um, I did root for Melissa and Bobby. Um, the murders were, the kills were nice, just for a person not really seriously into super torture porn. Um, it can cause a little anxiety or make you look that way when the screen is there. <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, I overall liked it. Um, it was a big departure from the first one. I wish they had kept it more along the lines, but torture porn was real big in 2008, so I can see why they went in that direction, because that is, you know, with Saul, um, that is when torture porn really exploded, was the mid-late 2000s and the 2010s were just full of torture porn. Of course, we have so many different subgenres now that torture porn is always going to be around, just like everything else. It's just not quite as prevalent as it used to be. You know, with Saw and Hostel and uh, Rest Stop and Joyride and Wrong Turn and all of these franchises that went full torture porn. So, yeah, I like it. It's a 6 out of 10 to me, which isn't a super high score, because I'm not a big fan of torture porn. They could have toned the kills down a little bit for me. Um, the dice game was very anxiety-causing, um, which is what torture porn is supposed to do. So, it does its job. So, like I said, I don't hate it. Um, I don't love it. It's not at the top of my list or anything, but it's fine. I love having all three of them, and I did. I watched all three of them last night and then took my notes, and I enjoyed all three of them just like I, you know, have always enjoyed them. So, yeah. That's Joyride 2, Dead Ahead. Always remember and never forget, you're a special, wonderful, unique person, and I value you taking the time to stop by and check out whatever I'm doing. Leave a comment, say hi, say fuck off, do whatever you want to do. Tell me what you think about the change from Joyride to Joyride 2, how they went into torture porn. Um, tell me what you think about that. Was it a good decision to you or a bad one? And yeah, I will see you in the next one where we will finish up this trilogy and I will talk to you then. Bye bye, see? Told you I was going to try to keep things shorter for you people with Twitter syndrome. And um, I'll see you in a few. Bye bye. Love you, miss you, bye.